Hi, I'm Valentin Zickner and in this video we are going to look at how we can integrate flowable forms into React. Therefore, I created already a React application with React 17, which we now can use to add flowable forms. I'm going to my IDE IntelliJ and will do an npm install dash dash save add flowable slash forms and uh, that is now downloading flowable forms from the flowable artifactory. In case you haven't authenticated yet against the flowable forms artifactory, I recommend checking out our additional video how you can set up your flowable frontend environment. In addition to downloading flowable forms itself, it will also download all the transitive dependencies of flowable. Once the download is complete, we will see here in the package JSON that we now have the add flowable forms dependency. Now I can use that dependency wherever I want in my app. For me, I now just go to the app JS, which is basically my main entry point, and I replace that nice animation which comes from React with my flowable forms. Therefore, I'm going to embed the form component in here, which comes from the flowable forms npm module. I need to provide as a first parameter here a config. This config you can get when you go to a flowable design and in flowable design, you can go ahead and select forms and then create a new form. Let's just call that hello world. And inside this hello world form, we are going to add a new text field. Let's just call that hello. And we are going to set the default value for this field to world. Let's click on preview since the preview gives here us the option to get a config. I'm going to select that entire config, copy it, and then go back to global uh, forms inside my IntelliJ and add it here as a config. Now let's just take that one and extract it to a constant. So we have the constant config in here. And when we look at this, we can actually also just remove some unnecessary uh, elements in here to have a short form with one row, one column, and then basically the definition in there. In an additional video, we will look then how you can get that configuration dynamically. For now, we just have that static. Going back to the React app, we see now we have a small field here, hello world. By default, we do not have any styling, but there, to change that, we can simply go ahead and import in here at global forms slash forms min CSS. Okay. Let's just auto format that and optimize the imports. And then it basically looks nice and we are ready to go. And when we go back here, it also looks nice. We have now a hello world field. The forms application itself gives you a few uh, parameters which you can configure. For example, you can have a debug tool that is going to enable that debugging console, which we have seen inside global design before. In addition to that, we can also go ahead and provide outcomes. Outcomes are typically part of the form configuration itself. However, um, we can add them manually later on as well, which is, for example, useful in case you would like to have a save button or in case the person modeling has not defined any buttons. Going back to the documentation, we can actually there go to flowable forms to have a look on how the structure of that outcome section looks like. Therefore, I just went to flowable forms and then basic outcomes. And here you can select um, the um, example text, how they look like. For now, I will just stick with those, which mean basically that I have three different outcomes. The labels will be save, delete, and cancel. And the value is actually what is then at the end sent as an outcome which was pressed. Now looking at my React application, I have those three buttons mentioned before. 
Going back here, the question is now, how can we handle when somebody presses one of those outcomes? And therefore there's the option to say here on outcome pressed, and I can just define my own method, which is handling the on outcome pressed. At the end, you would like to call in this case a global REST API most likely. So you would need to look what the parameters are here. And going back to the documentation, here in the usage with React, we have all the different parameters described, including on outcome pressed. And here we have payload and result as parameters for our function. So let's just provide those two and we will do a console log with payload and result in here. Going back to the browser, we can now test that out. So when I open now my browser console and press save, I'm going to see that I saved with the payload hello world. And when I just change the text to hello everybody and press cancel, for example, I see that I press cancel and the payload was hello everybody. That result you can now basically send to the appropriate global REST API. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.